Hey guys, how's it going? It's Target here. Welcome to the first episode of the Edmonton Oilers be a GM. That's right, you guys voted for them, and we're going to use them, and I couldn't be happier. I got to tell you, it came right down to the wire with the two teams, Edmonton Oilers and the Montreal Canadiens. Uh, literally, I think about 100 votes separated the two, but the Oilers come out on top, and so we're going to be using them here for the first time in NHL 15. Now, obviously, we're not going to be the Oilers throughout the entire year here of NHL 15. We'll actually be changing it up partway through, and we'll get some other teams in there so you guys can see some other players, and uh, obviously, every be a GM is different. Now, be a GM in NHL 15 has changed dramatically in terms of its appearance. Uh, the functionality of it, however, is almost identical. It's just a matter of trying to find exactly where uh, everybody, where all the, the different functions are. So that's going to be the toughest part about this. Now, I think the first step, like we always do, is we analyze the team. We take a look at the roster and see what we have, and we determine whether or not we're a playoff team or or we are a, uh, a rebuilding club. Now, the Edmonton Oilers on paper, from what everybody says, are a rebuilding club. They're in transition. Now, in the game, it's a completely different story. The Oilers can be competitive and actually push for a playoff spot with the right number of pieces. So, let's take a look here at the Edmonton Oilers, and let's manage our roster. I don't know if we can let it lines. All right, let's take a look at, uh, you know, let's go to roster move. Or not roster move, sorry. Let's just go to, can we just view roster? You know what, let's go to the, there's got to be uh, contracts here, hold on. Uh, manage budget, contracts, okay, perfect. So we'll take a look at who's on our NHL roster right now. Okay, here's, the, is this everybody? Uh, list all contracts, there we go, this is what we want right here. Okay, so on the main roster, we'll go by overall, top overall. Okay, so Taylor Hall, he's 90 overall. He's an, he has elite potential, so basically elite potential means that they're going to be 90 or higher player. That's what you can kind of expect from them. Uh, they also can be a little bit lower, 87. Um, but And then medium is just like uh, four and a half. Is, is like gold stars as opposed to... Uh, it's, there, there's, it's like gold stars, but uh, the elite would be your four and a half. So it's identical, it's just a different way of, of rating things, okay? Uh, David Perron, 86 overall. They've given him a boost this year for sure. 86 overall, that's fantastic as a second line option. That's really good to have him. Let's take a look at some of his stats here. What makes him so good? Uh, five star puck skills, four and a half star shooting and skating, four and a half star senses, four star defense and physical. So you can see that the defensive side is a little bit less than what it could be, but uh, everything else is really, really solid. David Perron, a very good two-way forward. You see his defensive awareness, 85, shot blocking, 83, and stick checking, 86. It's probably just the face-offs that don't give him that four and a half. So David Perron is a really good option for us. We've got him at 3.815 for two years left uh, on a one-way contract. All right, next up is Ryan Nugent Hopkins. Ryan Nugent Hopkins also is an elite player with that uh, medium potential. You see his puck skills are five stars. His senses are five stars. Shooting, skating, those are both four and a half. Uh, defense is four, and physical is only three. You kind of expect that from Ryan Nugent Hopkins. I mean, he's not very big at all. Uh, where's his weight and stuff? Does it say that? Where does, oh, yeah, six foot one, 180. So he's not very big, as you can see here. Uh, so his physical category category lacks, but his stick checking is really high at 88, and his defense awareness is really high at 85. So it's just the shot blocking that doesn't lend himself very well to uh, the defensive category. Faceoffs are all right at 75. You can make do with that. He's a very good first line option for us. Uh, Jordan Eberle, also an elite player. He is uh, how old is he now? 24 years old. So he's still got a couple years left here. Uh, five five star puck skills, four and a half star shooting, skating, and senses. Defense is also four stars, and physicality is three and a half stars. I forgot to take a look at Hall's breakdown here. Uh, Hall, yeah. Five-star puck skills, five-star shooting, skating, and senses, four-star defense, and four-star physicality. So he is your all-around best player. Six foot one, 201. He is a beast on the ice, and he's going to put up huge numbers for the Oilers this year. I just feel it, uh, both in real life and in the game for us here. Teddy Purcell. You got him rated as a top six player. Now, they've got him listed as potential as exact. Now, what exact means is just like the white stars in NHL 14. That means that they've capped out. They're as good as they're going to get. So, let's break down Teddy Purcell. He was acquired by the Oilers here in the offseason. And uh, he's got four and a half star puck skills. So, he's really good there. Shooting is at four stars. Not bad. 
four and a half star skating and senses really good senses great discipline he's not a guy that's going to take a lot of penalties defense is definitely something to be desired you see that three and a half star defensive rating that's not exactly what i'm looking for physicality is also very low for him physically he's not very physical player 80 body checking and aggressiveness strength is decent but uh, he's not bringing that physical element to the lineup that the Oilers desperately need. Something that we do not have is somebody who's four and a half star defense and four and a half star physical. So that might be something we go looking after. All right, let's move along here. Uh, Justin Schultz, 84 overall. He is has medium potential and he's elite for that. So that means he could get up there to about 90 overall if the circumstances are uh, right for that. Puck skills, four and a half stars. Shooting only four. Uh, skating, four and a half. Senses, four. Look at that discipline, 95. Offensive awareness, 87. I don't know how his senses aren't higher. I guess it's just that poise, but that's crazy. Defense, uh, four and a half star defense, actually, for Justin Schultz. Honestly, that's a little bit high. Justin Schultz is not a very defensive-minded player. I would almost give him three and a half or four star max on the defensive category. He's not very good defensively. Offensively, yeah, I give him a little bit of boost on the senses and the shooting, but I would not keep that defense that high. That's a little bit ridiculous. All right, Boyd Gordon. They got him as a top nine forward, so that means he can fit on the third line, which is nice. That's exactly where I'd like to put Boyd Gordon at 83 overall. You see him with that four and a half star physical category, good skating, uh, decent defense, shooting puck skills, and senses. They're all four stars. So for a third line checking forward, that's very nice. He's going to uh, fit in really well on that third line, playing a shutdown role, and we'll make sure that that line is set up defensively just like that. So, uh, moving on. Benoit Pouliot, also acquired here in the offseason. Four and a half star puck skills. Uh, he's a sniper, so f but only four star shooting. He's got four and a half star skating, four and a half star senses, uh, three and a half star defense, and four star physical. So he's not bad. I mean, this is a guy that could be yeah, a good third line scoring forward, a complimentary player to play on the power play, or uh, you know just somebody that can produce from that third line. I mean, if you take a look at his statistics over his career... Uh, you know, he put up 36 points last year and 20 points before. You know, he's a good third-line producing player. And given the right opportunities, he'll be able to do really well for the Oilers in that third line. Uh, Jeff Petrie, they've got him slotted as a top 4 D-man uh, with medium potential. He's 26 years old, so don't expect Jeff Petrie to jump very much. I mean, this will pretty much be at 83 overall, so Jeff Petrie's not exactly something that I want him to do. He is a top 4 defenseman right now, so that's good for him. Uh, he's got, I mean, I guess he has hit his potential. He's on the lower end of that, but that's okay. Uh, puck skills are very low, three and a half stars. Shooting, three and a half stars. Skating is at four and a half. Senses are three and a half. Defense is four and a half, and physical is three and a half. So you can see that there's not really much balance here for a top four defenseman. Not exactly something I'm looking for in my defense is somebody like that. I always want somebody that's got the ability to uh, be a little bit more balanced if you're going to be playing in the top four. If you're a top six, maybe there's a little bit more leniency because you're probably going to be playing in the bottom portion of, of the, the roster. But with a guy like this, you expect him to be a little bit better. So Jeff Petrie, he's not bad, but he's definitely uh, there's definitely better options out there for us. Nail Yakupov, they've actually got him rated really lowly, really lowly, really low in this game as a top six forward with low potential, all because he had one bad year. But he's 83 overall. They got him as a third line scoring forward. If you look at some of his, att or his stat attributes, look at this. Puck skills, five stars. Skating, five stars. Shooting, four and a half. Senses, four and a half. It's the defense and the physical category that drop him really low. Now, we haven't done any simulation with NHL 15, so we really have absolutely zero clue how the players will progress, if that potential can change. We'll see, time will tell, but right now, Neil Yakupov's rated really low. Hopefully, we can give him some options to uh, to progress, but at this point, it looks like Neil Yakupov will only be about an 84, 85, max 86 overall sniper for the Edmonton Oilers, which isn't necessarily a bad thing if we've got Jordan Eberle, but I think that there might be better options out there than Nail Yakupov. I'm actually quite disappointed with that rating. Uh, Mark Fain, also acquired in the offseason. He's a defensive defenseman, 27 years old. He is maxed out. Three star puck skills, not very good. Shooting, three and a half stars. Skating, four stars. 
Sense is three stars. Defense, four and a half. That's what I'm talking about right there. And his physical category is not bad at four. He is a top six defenseman. So this is a guy that's going to be playing the third pairing for us, grinding it out. His discipline's at 83, so don't expect him to take too many penalties, which is really nice. Don't expect him to produce much either. But you can see his defensive awareness at 85, shot blocking at 86, and stick checking at 85. He'll actually lend to be a very good complementary piece there on that uh, third pairing. Moving down to Andrew Ferentz. They've also got him rated as a top six defenseman. If you take a look at this, he's got three and a half star puck skills and shooting and physical. Skating is four stars. Defense is four and a half and senses are three. Now, when I put together my teams, I'm looking for players that complement each other really well. Uh, Andrew Ferentz and Mark Fain are kind of cut from the same cloth, if you think about it. Honest to goodness, Andrew Ferentz is nowhere near as good as Mark Fain is. Um, but... The fact of the matter is, they're almost identical to player. All right, they're, they're both shut down roles, uh, which we I'd like to put. You know, like maybe it could be a two way four, but a guy that has some puck moving ability. Neither of these guys have that ability. Nikita Nikitin. All right, he's also a top six defenseman, big guy, six foot four, two twenty three, twenty eight years old. Look at his categories: physical and defense, both four and a half stars. All right, he's got four star skating, three star senses, but you know what? The discipline's okay at eighty, so I'm not too concerned about that. Uh, the shooting is not that great. He's got a, a good power on his slap shot, but uh, besides that, Nikita Nikitin is definitely in a shutdown role. He is signed right now for quite a bit. Yeah, 4.5 million for two years. That's definitely uh, a player that we will not be holding on to long term. All right, uh, Matt Hendricks now a grinder. He's maxed out now. Top nine forward, so he's actually, they got him labeled as a fourth line forward. He had top nine potential, but he didn't make it. So he's a good fourth line option with 85 face-offs. Physical categories at five stars, which is fantastic. Defense, not great. Something to be desired there for sure. And uh, almost everything else has three and a half stars except for skating, which is four, even though he's not really that quick. It's that balance at 89 that brings him up. Uh, discipline is terrible, so you know Matt Hendricks is going to be taking an absolute ton of penalties. That is something that I don't like to have on a team, so he may find his way, might, may find himself on the way out. Uh, Jesse Joensu, he also has medium potential as a top six forward. However, he's 26 years old, already 80 overall. If you look at his categories, uh, he's a good balanced player. I mean, his shooting's not great, so he's not really going to be putting up many points. Uh, his puck skills. They got him at four stars, but really, that's not much at all. Senses, also four stars. That's a terrible average. I mean, look at that. I mean, that's not good at all. Defense, three and a half. Not good. Physical, that's about all he's good for, is being a physical player. And he's got pretty good skating. So, Jesse Jonesu is definitely trade bait. Let's uh, let's move along here. Actually, that, we're almost done here. Uh, Martin Marinch, and this is one of the, the curious ratings for me in this game they've got martin marinch and rated as a top four defenseman with high potential that's four green stars for any of you that aren't aren't aware of that i believe that may have been what he was in the first the last game however he could have been three and a half green stars so martin marinch is definitely an option for us in the future to play that top four role he's already 79 overall at a top six defenseman and the nice thing about him is he's a bit more of a puck moving defenseman than the other two shutdown guys. Uh, but he's got a lot more growing to do. And honestly, would prop with the amount of def defensive depth we have on this team, he could probably do with playing another another year in the minors. Uh, Keith Ollie, the Oilers also signed this guy to a one year contract at six foot five, two twenty eight. He's a beast. His senses are absolutely terrible. Shooting is only three stars. It's the physical category they brought Keith Ollie in for. Another guy who really doesn't have much potential for us. I mean, he is only really rated for top six, and he's a depth. He's a, currently has a depth defenseman, so he will be playing in the minors for us if we decide to keep him. Otherwise, he's trade bait. Oscar Clefbaum, they got him as a medium top four defenseman, so he'll probably get up to the point that Jeff Petrie's at, maybe an 85 overall, and uh, that would be a nice option for us, considering his puck skills are also, you know, they're a little bit lower right now, but they'll get better. He has that potential as a two-way defenseman. Uh, he is a very mobile defenseman, not a big physical hitter. He uses his body just to dislodge the puck and, and, and move it quickly. That's about all Oscar Clefbaum will do. Uh, a couple more players, Luke Gazdick. They've got him as an enforcer, 74 overall. Again, enforcers aren't going to have much here. I mean, defensive category, only two and a half stars. This is a guy that I don't like to play just because he ends up being more of a liability than he actually helps. So 
will probably end up playing him in the minors as well, despite his physical category being five stars. That discipline at 60. Him with Hendricks, oh my goodness, they'd be taking penalties all the time. Will Acton is considered a bottom six forward potential. However, minor scoring forward is his role, so that means he's going to be playing in the minors. Not much to tell here. Really low categories at 74 overall, 74 overall and no potential. Leon Dressidel, the latest draftee by the Edmonton Oilers. He is a two, they got him later as a two way forward. I'd give more of a playmaker uh, label if I were them. Uh, his defense is something to be desired at this point. He's only 72 overall, but uh, he's got that elite medium potential. So it's just like Taylor Hall, Jordan Eberle, and Ryan Nugent Hopkins and Justin Schultz. It's all the same thing. Uh, Leon Dressidel is going to be a key fixture of that top six in the future for us. Let's take a look at the in the system. Let's see if there's anybody noteworthy here. All right. Okay, so here's the best ones. We got Roman Horak. He's 23 years old, 77 overall. He's got low potential as a top six forward. So Roman Horak's a guy that could step in maybe eventually with, I mean, he's 23, so he's got a few years to go. He could step in eventually in a, uh, a bottom six role, uh, possibly. You know, he could be a top six forward, but it's more likely that he'll be a bottom six. So we'll see how things go there. Uh, we got Darnell Nurse now. They've got him rated as a top four defenseman, medium uh, medium potential. So that means he's about four green stars, just like Oscar Clefbaum. He's 19 years old. He's got a long way to go at 70 overall, but expect him to be playing in the NHL at some point, maxing out at about 84, 85 overall. Uh, Marco, Marco Waugh, Marco Olivier Waugh. He is a playmaker. They changed him from a grinder in this game, it looks like. Medium top six forward potential, so that's not too bad at all. We could find He could find himself in the NHL lineup at some point, being only 19 years old. He has a long way to go, and he has some good potential. Martin Gurnat, uh, labeled as a top six defenseman potential, uh, medium. So there's a good chance that he'll end up being about 81, 82 overall. And uh, he's a two-way defender, so that means that he can actually gain those puck skills as well as the defensive categories, which makes him much more balanced. Uh, Mark Arcabello, they've actually got him in the minors, I don't know why. Uh, his potential is a bottom six forward. He's currently a minor six forward, uh, but he may end up actually playing in our lineup come... I mean, he's got high potential, actually, as a bottom six forward, but, oh, you know what, he's 26 years old. He's going to max out right away here, uh, so that'll pretty much be it for Mark Arcabello. Anton Lander... He has high bottom six potential, so it's almost a guarantee that we'll see Anton Lander up in the NHL at some point. That means he's probably about uh, three green stars, is what I would say that would equate to. Uh, with four, par four star puck skills, that's uh, definitely a bright light there, as well as the skating. Uh, defensively, good faceoffs, so that's a nice piece for us in Anton Lander. Tyler Pitlick now. All right. He is a bottom six forward with medium potential, so he's probably about three three and a half yellow stars i would say at 74 overall he's not far off they've actually got him already as a fourth line forward believe it or not so he could jump right in and play a role with us uh he's got good skating category fantastic skating category but his defense is so piss poor i don't think i could trust him with any kind of responsibility whatsoever i'd rather put in gazdick uh and then we've got some guys that are all maxed out ryan hamilton right here power forward again minor league guy we're not going to be doing much with him uh steve pizzanotto Steve Pins or sorry, Pinizzotto, sorry. Uh, he's a grinder, 83 overall, or sorry, 73 overall, fourth line player. Not much to tell you there. Mitch Moraz, they got him as a bottom six forward, a left wing grinder. Good uh, skating already for this big guy. Six foot one, 214. Mitch Moraz, I think, is a little bit underrated in this game. I think that he has more potential than that. Maybe we'll see him jump up. We'll take a look here. Uh, this is that Indian guy. There you go. Juha. Juhara Kaira, my goodness, bottom six forward potential, again, this is about three, three and a half yellow stars at 67 overall, not bad, they have Bogdan Yakimov in here, they got Greg Chase, see Greg Chase right here, uh, they got him as low potential for bottom six, uh, Greg Chase though is actually one of the surprise players, the Oilers drafted him in the seventh round, I believe, if they say that, yeah, seventh round, two, uh, 188th overall in 2013, He's a guy that actually probably will play in the NHL at some point. He's a fantastic prospect. Uh, Jackson Hook. Jackson Hook has very little potential. Again, just like the other guys, bottom six forward potential. Um, David Musil. They've actually got him labeled as a seventh defenseman potential. I've never seen that. That's interesting. So he's your basically your backup guy, a seventh D. And he has medium potential for getting there. So he's probably going to spend his entire career in the AHL. Uh, Hunt. 
medium top four AHL. I'm not even going to look at you. Same, all these guys. These guys are all expendable. Not much to talk about there. So they don't have Bogdan Yakimov in the game because he probably hasn't played a single game in the in the North in North America. So that's probably why. All right, let's take a look at our goaltending situation here before we wrap things up, and we'll take a look at the lines. Uh, we got Victor Faust and Ben Scrivens in net. All right, Victor Faust, 84 overall. He's got four and a half star reflex and athleticism. His puck control is four stars. So the two ones that are really important reflexes and athleticism very good they've got him labeled as an nhl starter and he's going to be battling with ben scrivens for that starting spot take a look at ben scrivens all right nhl starter four and a half star reflexes four and a half star athleticism and four star puck control almost identical almost identical 84 overall he'll those two together will be able to give us a really good option in the system we got a couple goalies uh number one uh we got richard bachman he's maxed out 79 overall Good uh, minor league system player. Uh, Franz Tuo Tuohima. To Tuomia. Oh my goodness. Tuohima. Tuohima. Uh, from Finland. He's got medium potential as an AHL starter. So he'll be basically the next uh, Richard Bachman. Uh, Laurent Brossois. He's got high potential as an NHL backup. So we'll see how things go with him. He's probably our best defense or goaltending prospect. But that's, that's really not saying much. Uh, Tyler Buns. He's got medium potential as an AHL, AHL starter, just like Tuomi, tu, tu, my goodness, Tuohima. And then, of course, we've got Bouchard. This is the last one. He's got low potential as an AHL starter. So, honestly, one, two, and three. These three are pretty much expendable. We could almost move Laurent Brassois. If we wanted to pick up a goalie with some potential, uh, we could probably go ahead and do that and not worry too much about it. All right, so that's the roster for you guys. Let's take a look at the lineups really quickly. Hold on, I need a sip of my tea. Okay, so, not, ma oh, not manage roster. Oh, yeah, manage roster. Edit line. Okay, so let's first do offense, and we'll do the best lines. Um, okay. Oh, it is already set. So, what they've got set up is Taylor Hall, Ryan Nugent Hopkins, and Jordan Eberle. I really like that line. That's what I want to keep together. They're going to score a lot, and that's what we want. So, um, and that's nice to have. Now, Boyd Gordon is considered a top nine forward, I believe. Our third line checking forward is what they got him as. So Boyd Gordon, whoop, got to get used to the new system. Boyd Gordon would figur figuratively go right there, okay? Um, Nail Yakupov, they've got him as a third line scoring forward as well. Uh, Purcell, a second line forward. So honestly, I'd probably switch these two guys around. All right, put Yakupov on the third line with Pouliot and Gordon. Uh, Hendricks, we'll move you down here. And then we've got Joe and Sue and Gazdek. Now... Where could we make improvements? Well, we need a second line center. All right. So basically, with that second line center, we have just too much, I guess, low end talent. I don't want to put Boyd Gordon up there. If we want to be competitive, we're going to need a second line center. So we're about one piece off on the offensive category uh, from being a playoff team. Maybe an 84, 85 overall player with good defensive category would be really nice to complement these two. Uh, let's take a look at our defense now. We're almost done. We'll wrap it up here. We got Justin Schultz and uh, Jeff Petrie as our top pairing. Now, Jeff Petrie is considered a top four, and Justin Schultz is also considered a top four. So, you know, hypothetically, this is what you would want. All right? And then you'd want to put this and here. Now, I'd probably end up keeping Marinchin and Dish get rid of Andrew Ferentz and Nikita Nikitin. The only problem here is we might be able to trade one, maybe, I don't know, maybe Jeff Petrie instead. If you played one of these guys up out of their position. So let's put uh, Nikita Nikita in there. And if we put, if we traded Jeff Petrie and Andrew Ferentz, we might be able to get a good third line or a good second line center potentially. And maybe we could trade a goalie too. But uh, that's, it's really all we have right now. We don't have too much to offer in terms of current roster players. We'd be actually trading away uh prospects and draft picks so what am i doing here i don't know what's going there we go so will acton can't play on the second line boyd gordon i don't want playing on the second line i would prefer somebody else to play there i don't know what's out there i don't know what's available now before we take off i just want to see what's available in free agency let's see what's available we might be able to pick something up uh review contracts offer sheets i don't know where everything is so hold on 
Um, here we go. Trade and improve. That's what we want to look at. Uh, scouting free agents. So let's see. I don't know how much there is, really. Come on. <laughs> Anytime now. Okay. Overall. There we go. So there's actually Daniel Alfredson. Top six forward. Um, he could slot in on the, third, the second line. But we don't need a winger. We would actually need a center. It doesn't look like there are any centers. Uh, there is Yoni Pitkinen who wants one year at 4.825. We don't have the cap space though. We've only got $855,000 in cap space. Um, so really I don't think we have much in terms of options there. Goalies. Are there any goalies? Martin Brodeur. He wants 1.25. We don't need any goalies. But there might be some guys with... Can you search by potential? Uh-oh. Can you not search by potential? Oh, yeah, there you go. There it is. NHL starter. My bad. It's right next to their name. There we go. NHL backup. NHL. A couple NHL starters, and they're all old. <laughs> they're all old. So nobody there. Uh, if I look at all skaters now... And I sort that by potential. Man, oh man, this is slow. And then I'm going to look at age as well. Nope. There you go. Top four. So right here, Davies. I don't know how. He's only 66 overall. Disregard. He's got high potential, but he's going to be maxed out. Um, McBain. He was $2.9 million. Jamie McBain. And uh, he's a top four defenseman. No. He's not going to get there. And that looks like pretty much it, guys, for free agents. So there really isn't much in terms of free agents. But if you guys have any suggestions of what we should do, of how we should proceed with our team, are we a, uh, a playoff-ready team, or do we need to make some changes here? I think we do need a second line forward, uh, specifically a center. So maybe with the next video, we'll come and take a look at that. All right, guys, put your comments down in the description below. Get ready for a great year of Be a GM with NHL 15. Until next time, I'm Target Audience, and I'll catch you guys out on the ice.